Hey guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to take you through four Black Friday designs in Adobe Illustrator. Now love it or hate it, every year we get clients asking us for Black Friday related content. So we're showing you our techniques to create some interesting looking graphics on this topic. Let's head onto the computer now and get started. Okay, so here we are in Illustrator and as usual guys, you can download this exact same template file that we're working from here and you're welcome to use any of these pre-made designs in any of your work if you want to, but we're going to recreate all of this in this video today. So what I'm going to do is go over to our right hand artboard and we're just going to start by grabbing our ellipse tool and just drag out a perfect circle holding shift. I'm going to give this just a fill of black for the time being and then we can apply colors afterwards. One quick thing to mention is we are using a lot of fonts in this. These are all outlined as it stands but when we go to use fonts in our live work here they are all completely free. Otherwise you can use your own fonts. It may be like we say that you are doing some kind of Black Friday promotion for one of your clients and they have their own brand fonts that they would like to use. But getting back into the tutorial we have our perfect circle here. Now with this selected I'm going to apply a brush. So if I click on our brush definition drop down here you can see I've actually already got a bunch of custom brushes applied. Now you may not have this by default. To get these options you can just go to the top right hand side of this panel and we can go to open brush library and the options that I've selected are in artistic and artistic paintbrush. The first thing we want to do actually is apply a stroke so I'm just going to match the stroke to the same black color and you can just start scrolling through them. So you can see by clicking the first option here we're getting this nice textured brush stroke around the edge of our circle. It's this one that we used in our example so I'll stick with this one for now. If I select this again we can always adjust the stroke way to make it more pronounced. And the other thing I like to do is with the circle selected again is go up to effect, distort and transform and roughen. I'm going to click our preview on and it's going to look a bit crazy to begin with but we'll choose the smooth option. I'm also going to choose absolute and we'll just bump this down to even just one pixel just to make it a little bit more rough and not quite so perfect. You're still getting the idea of a perfect circle in terms of the proportions of it but we're just roughening up the edges a bit and this gives us quite a nice effect. What I can also do is select all of this, go to object, expand appearance and then go over to my pathfinder and just unite all of this and that's just going to basically outline this so we've just got a single compound path shape here and we can change the colour. Now we've already got some colours set up in here already, although I don't think I have one for what I'm after, so I'm just going to double click on our fill here and we'll go with pink here, just for this example. And now we're just going to type out our text, so just with my type tool, so we'll go something like that. I'm going to select it all, centre it up, and we used a font called Hey August. Again, like we say, this is a free downloadable font, so we're also going to go into character and select the all caps option, so we'll just sit a little bit better and we can center this up against our circle here. We'll scale this up and I'm just going to outline this as I did in the other option. I'm just going to grab my pencil tool. Now I've got smoothing turned up to the max so you can double click on the pencil icon to do this and I'm just going to draw in some strokes here just above and below. I'll give this a black stroke and again I'm going to go into our brush options and we can select another brush potentially here. We'll take our stroke weight down to 0.25 for this example and then I'm just going to hold option or alt on a PC, click and drag and make a copy and I'll just use my flip options in our properties and that's really it for this design. Moving on we're going to recreate this banner here and if I zoom into this a bit more you can see we've got intertwined text here. Again it's fairly simple to do this and we'll show you now how to do it. I'm going to start by typing out our text here so I'll maybe try this font called B Vietnam. I don't think it's the same one we've used over on on our other artboard however it will still do nicely for this example and for our sale text the one we used I believe is called Allura and we have it still set to all caps so it's looking a bit mental now okay and I'm just going to make this a red color just so it stands out we can always go back and change this and I'm just going to select all of it 
and press shift command and o or shift control and o on a pc and that's just going to outline the text i'm going to double click on the black friday text here to go into the group and i'm just going to select the text that says black and scale this up to be the same width as friday okay double click to get back out we're going to grab our sale text and i'm going to rotate this slightly and this is really just about playing around until we can start to see some areas that overlap so what i'm looking at really in this example is the lower section of the s you can see this is going to loop through the r quite nicely and then the top section of the l with this kind of thing it's always good to make duplicates and try different things out so i'm just going to drag a copy out by holding option alt on a pc i'm just going to go to my shape builder now so that's shift and m and all i'm going to do is go up to my fill color and set this to black as well to match our text here and then i can just start merging sections together so all i'm going to do is click and drag over these three sections and you can see we now get the illusion that the s is looping through the r and then same again up with the c we'll go with the line that's looping up and through the c we're going to give that the appearance that it's going under the c and then back around so just clicking and dragging over that section as well the last thing i'm going to do is just fill some of this empty space either side of the word sale so i'm just going to drag a line here and i'm going to go into my stroke options we'll give this rounded caps and we're going to actually make this a dotted line so take the dash down to zero remember to click dashed line i'm just going to press up on my arrow keys to get the spacing i want so we'll go with two point hit enter and then i'm just going to drag out the duplicate holding shift and option to keep it on the same plane and the last thing i want to do is grab the rectangle tool and i'm just going to draw a rectangle over this text making sure it aligns with each edge essentially and we still got our stroke set so i'm just going to flip this to a fill and we'll give this just give this a gray color for now we can go and recolor this afterwards then i'm going to go up to object path offset path preview and we'll go with 10 pixels i'll click ok now i want to send this to the back click our original rectangle here and delete that and you can see we now have a holding shape and the distance between the edges is equidistant so that's what we want i'm just going to grab my add anchor point tool now just trying to click this in the middle now this is a little bit tricky because we've got so many elements here that our smart guides are wanting to align to so what i'm going to do is just select our text in the middle press command x to cut this away we'll go back to our add anchor point tool and we're just looking for that smart guide so click a point so it's directly in the middle we can paste our text back in place so command f to do that and it's going to stay in the exact same position now with my direct selection tool i'm going to select the top and bottom anchor points on the right hand side and holding shift just drag these out and we get this ribbon effect and what i'm going to do is just change this text to white so i'll maybe grab the sale text i think we've got a lighter red in here we'll change our dotted lines as well and i think that will do for this example here we've got two different fonts that work well with each other and it just looks a little bit more designed and thought out than just slapping the text on in quite a simple way so the first thing i'm going to do again is grab my type tool and again we'll type out black friday over two lines we've still got our script font here but i'm going to change this to a font called gilroy and we're going to go with the extra bold option i'm going to go to my character options we'll go back to an all caps option here i'm going to left align this one again this is completely optional but having the word sale in a scripty or handwritten font is always a nice idea just to add a bit of contrast to the design so we're going to use a font called mr defoe so again we're just going to say sale we'll select it all go to character and turn off our all caps script fonts never look good in all caps so always recommend that you change this so i'm actually just going to angle this and put this off to the side for the time being i'm actually going to select it all and outline it again so shift command and o now this is personal preference some people don't like outlining fonts and obviously if you think you're going to be changing the content of the text then don't do that until you've got the text finalized but i just prefer it for getting slightly more precise alignment with my vectors so again i'm going to grab a rectangle go something like this what i'm actually going to do is select our background rectangle and with my eyedropper tool i'm actually just going to take this color that we've got in our example i think it's slightly nicer and now i want to zoom in so we're going to make a copy of our original text so just command c and i'm not going to paste anything back in yet so our usual technique to create these long shadows is to hold option or alt and click and drag a duplicate of this out then selecting both of them i'm going to go to object blend and make and you can see this is creating a single iteration by 
default, but if I double click on the blend tool over on the left hand side, we get our blend options appearing, click preview, and normally what I do is go to specified steps and usually a value of 100 does a pretty good job, but in this case it's quite a long distance we have to cover here. So you can see we've got these jagged edges. Now this is fine, we could essentially just up this value or I could go to specified distance and take the specified distance right down uh, even to one pixel and we're getting a smoother line. However, that's going to create a lot of iterations. If we go to expand this and merge it, your computer is going to struggle. So what I'm going to do instead is I'll just click OK, but instead of expanding it, I'm just going to use this as a guide and I'm going to grab my line segment tool. For the sharp cornered characters, this is much easier. So on the K, for example, here, I'm just going to click and drag a line down to the equivalent point on our duplicated K. And you can see our smart guides are automatically going to snap to these points. So that was much easier. But all we're wanting to do is create these casting lines wherever there is a line coming off one of the characters. So again, and you can see when I hover over it, it's, it's highlighting our text objects here. So things like the K is much easier. And the reason I'm doing this over this blend is just for reference. It just makes it slightly easier to get the angle at which we should create these lines. So this is where it becomes slightly trickier is on a character like a C here. It's not just a case of going to the anchor point of the C. The angle is slightly different. So I need to go slightly further round on the path here. And and I'll click and drag and again really just eyeballing this one but it's fine for this example it's still going to give you a good effect again we'll go to the A now also by using the blend first and using it as a guide we can see which lines we actually have to create you don't have to create these lines for every point on every character it's just a few so okay so you can see if I click and drag over this we've got all of our casting lines now as well as our text so what I want to do now is merge these areas together to create this casting shadow but we're going to do it in vector format and we're going to use the shape builder tool to help us do this. So the first thing I want to do is select our text here and I'm just going to go to object blend and release and all I need to do now is click and drag over our text and the lines and I'm going to keep the rectangle selected as well as this is just going to help us create where we want this shadow area to be. Let's grab the shape builder tool now and what I'm going to do first is select a fill color of black and that's where the shape builder tool is brilliant because we can essentially live paint with it just need to set the fill or stroke color and any objects we drag over it's going to apply that color to so all I'm doing here is clicking and dragging over the areas that I want to create this shadow between and there we have it so we've got our casting shadow now I can just delete this text at the bottom press command F and that's going to place our text back in place and I'm just going to change the fill color to white. Again, I'm just going to go over to our example, press I on the keyboard and copy this purple color, slightly nicer. And we can just pull our sail text back down now. And I'll just match the same color we have in the background here. Just going to bring it to the front as well. So it's slightly overlapping the text here. For this example, I think this is fine. So there we have three examples of some Black Friday designs here. I'm going to just start by creating our text. I'm going to use a font called called Barlow for this. I'm going to go with the condensed font for this example. So we'll go with condensed black, we'll make it all caps. And don't worry about the leading for this example because we're going to be editing these individually of each other. So I'm actually going to change this sail weight. I'm just going to change this from black to maybe semi bold. And again, I'm going to outline this. So shift command O, right click on it and ungroup it all. And then I'm just going to group the individual words. The first thing I'm going to do is drag some rectangles over each block of text. So this is the exact same technique we've been doing for a few of the others. I'm gonna send these to the back. So shift command left bracket and then I'm just going to select the text itself and we'll just change this to white and we'll change the background of our sail option to a red color. I'm just going to slightly reposition them the way I want them. I'm going to make the sail box smaller. I'm going to select everything now. I'm going to right click, go to transform and rotate. Click the preview option and then I'm just going to bump up this value, go with 14% and then I want to use the shear function. So right click again, transform 
and shear and then I'm going to match the same degree angle that we just set for our rotation so if I just bump this up to 14 degrees and what this means is we're skewing this text but the vertical the vertical lines are still going to be perfectly vertical I'm going to select all of our background squares here and copy them so command C command F to paste them and I'm just going to unite all of that together to make a single shape I'll send this to the back so shift command and the left bracket and then just with my arrow keys I'm just going to offset this slightly just to create this shadow effect we're not scaling it or anything just moving it okay and to create the halftone dot fill this is another preset fill that's available in Illustrator now I already have these set up within my swatches so you can see all of these swatches within here are different types of halftone fill so you can see if I click on some of these we've got a few different options now if you don't have this it's very easy to get these just go to the top right hand corner of your swatches panel click this option and we're gonna go to open swatch library and within here you can see we have a ton of different options to choose from now the option you want to go for for this example is within patterns basic graphics and then you can see we have basic graphic dots lines and textures so I imported the dots and the lines and it's actually going to be one of the dot options that we're going to use here so if you click on this this will then import these options into your swatches library and the option that we selected was this one here it's called undulating fine dots what I can do as well is click on this and if we want to rotate this pattern you can see it's all looking a bit vertical right now I can right click go to transform rotate and if I uncheck our transform objects option it's just going to apply this to our fill pattern so I can change the angle here and give it a slightly nicer look and that's the basis of this design done so there you have our four Black Friday designs now of course there are many other approaches and techniques that you could use in your own designs however hopefully you found some useful tips and tricks within this video if you have any questions at all do let us know in the comments down below and if you enjoyed it please do hit the like button if you haven't already, subscribe for more weekly content and if you'd like to know more about our full graphic design course, visit graphicdesignerpro.com. See you next time.